Friends, God bless you. Peace be with you. Welcome back to the Reach More podcast. Today, I'm excited to go back and talk about my interview with Jericho. There was a lot of great stuff that we wanted to pull out and show how everybody can apply that to their approach to to starting an apostolate and what the Lord has asked them to do. And I'm also super, super excited because we have a a new co-host today, somebody who's never joined us, Josh Dart. How are you, man? Hey, brother. Good to see you, man. I'm doing well. You as well. Well, I'm very glad that uh, I get to to co-host today with you. I know this is your first time, but you're going to do awesome because everybody's talked about how fun you are. So they really did a good job cutting me up on the intro video to reach more. So good deal. <laughs> so um, thinking about my interview with Jericho, uh, super cool guy, really like a, a go getter. Didn't uh, didn't waste any time at a, a, a difficult period when there wasn't a lot of opportunities. He started a men's group during COVID and then just really kept a, adapting. Yeah. Um, what were some of the things that stood out to you from his approach that you think everybody could embrace and apply? Yeah, I think the first thing that jumped out at me, Dan, was the language he used. He, he knew the categories of people. And he let that inform his goals. So he talked about winning people back to just just a, an intentional relationship with the Lord. Like they haven't been to Mass in a while, and now he wants them to recommit to Jesus. And he's going to help them right there. He's like recognizing where they're at and what's the next step. And he, and he did this throughout. He was like, okay, and I want to help establish them as believers. And then there are some guys who want to be leaders. Actually, I think his first kind of small group was all about leaders. There were guys who were hungry for leadership. And then he knew about disciple makers. And he used this very intentional language throughout the whole interview. And I was like, there's a lot of guys that just start, they start apostolate. They don't really know the end goal, but Jericho was like, it's that military coming through. I think he was just like precise. Begin with the end in mind. I want to build saints. I'm going to meet them here. I want to move them here. And I love how he, he and his wife talked about it a lot too. And it seemed like they really bounced off each other. But it would have been fun to have her on the podcast as well. Actually, yeah. Yeah. That, that would have been. been. But I, I loved his intentional language there and the categories he had in his mind, not to put people in boxes, but to let that inform his goals and his apostolate and discernment of it and execution of it, you know? Yeah, I think the fruit is that he was able to hand those those different apostolates off. Like the men's group is still going, even though he's not running it. And at least as often as not, those things just kind of crumble because there's a failure to pass on the leadership baton. Yeah, but because he knew from the get go, like he wasn't just inviting people to a Bible study, like a Bible study on its own is a good thing that it's great for people to be involved with. But there's a there's a next step for all of us. And that I mean, the final step is helping other people come to know Jesus. And like you said, he had that clarity about what he was doing from the start, which is, I think, something just because it's what Jesus asked us to do, we should never forget. Like we always yeah. want to keep that in mind. How can I help other people say yes to, to Jesus's invitation to follow and help them make that same invitation to others? Because that's the only way the church is really going to grow. And, it, and it's so good to be able to invite brothers, brothers and sisters, kind of around to your side of the table in mission community and be like, you know, for a while I was investing in you and you know that and you blessed me. But, you know, I instigated this. But now I'm sharing everything with you. Like, I want to build an army of disciple makers to reach the lost with the love of Jesus. Like, come around to my side of the table. Let's dream and scheme for the glory of God. And and that's actually kind of a rare place of camaraderie with men and women. But when, when you're privileged to be working with the Lord to build that, oh, it warms my heart. You know, we talk about mission community a lot at the EC and it's so important. I was I was speaking with a parish uh, yesterday, and I spent a good half of my staff formation with them, just encouraging them um, and asking them, like, do you feel like you have good camaraderie? Do you guys feel like you could pray together more? How's your prayer life as a staff? You know, and, and I, you know, you know, people always feel a little guilty when you talk to them. About, <laughs> How's your prayer as a staff? Because everybody's like, well, it could be a lot better, right? Yeah. But I just, I just said, do you think we're in for an easy ride for the next 10 years as a church? And everybody was like, no way. I said, we got to pray, you know? And it was just really awesome to see this, this beautiful staff and team come alive and be like, yeah, we have got to be mission community together 
And so I, I love what Jericho was doing there, like bringing the leaders around to his side of the table and be like, let's go. Let's get yeah. some. Yeah, yeah. That's a great image, too. I mean, to like think of not just um, investing in people, but then asking them to, to come on board, sharing the mission. And um, at the end of the day, Jesus shared the mission. He shared the responsibility to build the church with all of us. And yeah, like the uh, Last Supper, you know? I, yeah, exactly. Like all you said, friends. Yeah. So are we willing to share the mission with others enough to invest in them and say, okay, I, I need you to do what I was doing. Um, the church does not grow without that, plain yeah. and simple. We yeah. might add members, like pe more people might be baptized and more people might be confirmed. But I, unless we invite people into that role, the church is not going to grow with, I, I would say, like a rich harvest of disciples. Yeah, and the ownership. And and God gives us ownership. I mean, you, you've got kids, right? Yeah. I don't know. How many kids? I have kid. I should have read your bio. Okay, you no have a kid. <laughs> kid. It's I remember my first kid, little girl, and I like I remember kneeling down at the end, end of my bed when we brought her home from the hospital and just being like, I can't believe God trusts me yeah. with a child. Yeah. I, like, I was like, I'm gonna be the best dad in the world. Look at me now. I'm, it's a mess. <laughs> but, but you know, like this ownership, God, God brings us into his plan for the salvation of the world, participation yep. in and like it as leaders, you know, in 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 the secular world or in, in our apostolates and the mission that God invites us into, he invites us to take ownership. And part of that is helping to, to lead others into ownership of their spiritual authority in the world. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. And the Lord there is giving Uncle Ben amazing power, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <Spider -Man. laughs> well. What were what were some of the other things that Jericho did or talked about? Yeah, that think so, are good to emulate. Yeah, so the, he had a good categorical language that informed you know his his goals for his apostolate. Uh, another thing that struck me was um, his expectant spirit. So I wrote this down when I listened to him because it just struck me. He said every night I pray this. He said, "Show me the things that only I can do for you, mm -hmm. and show me the things that I can do the best for you." And I loved his expectant spirit that he had an expectancy that God had things for him to do and that God had a purpose for him. Like he wasn't just wandering in a reactive lifestyle. Like yeah. God has made me for a purpose and I have an expectancy, right? Um, yesterday there was, a, there was another, I was meeting with a group of leaders at a, that same parish and uh, one of one of the one of the ladies uh, out of a training group, she said, just she's real, real candid. She's like, Josh, and here's here's some of the people in my life that I have a heart for, but but nothing seems to be working. And uh, I just felt like encouraging her in the same thing. I said, nothing seems to be working, but do you think God loves this particular person more than you do? So like, yeah, of course, you know. Well, we should have an expectant spirit that God is only a moment away from transforming their whole life. We, we've got to live in that reality that as much as we love people, God loves them a hundred thousand times more. And we have to have an expectancy that at any moment there could be a tremendous breakthrough in their life. Right. And Jericho is living with that expectant spirit in his heart and in his prayer. He's saying, Lord, show me. I think he said something like, Lord, you like the path and I will walk it, right? Well, there's there's a lot of things there. He's got faith that there is a path. He's got faith that the Lord will light the path. He's got faith that the Lord will guard him as he walks that path. There's just like this expectant faith in the Lord that, that I love. It just kind of exuded through everything he said, you know? Yeah, I really felt that interviewing him and, and speaking with him both before and, and after. So for for the rest of us, right? If we want to we wanna live with that expectant spirit, um, I think you gave us a good example there with the the person who, you know, didn't really see a lot going on. But to remind ourselves, God wants to do something. He we don't we don't know his timing. We don't know his plan, but he wants to do something. And I think especially that idea that I think the the image you used was like Jericho wasn't just he's not wandering around in life, like hoping he comes across something. He knows that God is is active in his life and in his providence will guide Jericho to the people and to the conversations that he needs to have in order for people to encounter God's mercy. Yeah. And at the same time, like that's going to be, that's part of, of his plan to love Jericho as well and all of us. So 
in our apostolates, there are conversations, there are people that are they're just on the other side of, of a door, of a conversation, you never know. And so we can walk around with that hope and with that expectancy. Yeah, it, playing off his name, right, Jericho, like it reminds me of the two blind men outside of Jericho when Jesus yeah. was passing by. They had such an expectancy that Jesus would heal them. Mm -hmm. Son of David, don't pass me by. I'm blind. And they shushed him up, but they yelled <laughs> louder until they yeah, were, yeah. Kids, you know, and, and Jericho's got that expectancy, like, Lord, don't pass me by. Show me what to do and I will do it. Like, show me, Lord, what only I can do. Like, and that's not saying like he's cocky, but it's no, not at all. He knows that he is made with a purpose. You know, he's a unique individual brought to perfection through his connection with Jesus Christ for a purpose. Right. It says yeah. that in scripture. And I, I love that expectant spirit. We've got to cultivate that as a church. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I you and I could both share stories in our own lives. We can look at the lives of the saints. Like think of St. Saint, Saint Augustine, right? How long did they pray for him? And, and he was just a moment away from. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the story of our lives. You know, we're always a moment away from more of the Lord than ever before. So. What were what were some of the other things that really stood out to you? Let's see. I liked how um, at the very beginning when he talked about how he started his apostle, he said he looked around. The, the young adult group was was waning and the circumstances around him kind of dictated a, a necessity, a need. Right. And and I like that. He let this. He, he was he was smart and navigating and noticing the circumstances around him that that were really um, informing his apostolate and the need there. I yeah. think sometimes we, we, we fall into a trap and think our apostolate has to be super unique and we have to really pray hard and God's going to give us a really detailed plan when, when really like right in front of me, there's a couple of guys and, and we're decent friends, but all of us could be a lot more intentional in the world. Yeah. And he yeah, just yeah. looked around him and he was like, geez, it's COVID. People are, lonely and isolated and the lord calls us to unity of heart and to be with one another to stir one another up to love and good works hebrews 10 24 and 25 and he just is like i'll do it i'll be the fire starter i'll be the instigator <laughs> and, and it wasn't rocket science you know it was like here's a need i've got two legs and two arms and a brain i love jesus let's go <laughs> and and that kind of started a domino effect you know like I, I think back to a lot of things in my life where I, I had just enough to go on from the Lord or a piece about it or a conviction about it to start with a small group, a small list of like guys I was going to invite to a small group or some guys I was going to meet with. And, you know, some said yes to the group, some said no. But then the ones that said yes were like, hey, I've got a friend I might invite too. You know, and so I started with this select group of these five guys. And at the end of the day, it turned into half those guys and a bunch of other guys. And then that turned into something bigger as it evolved and matured. So I like the fact that he just kind of looked around, saw a need, asked the Lord, should I do it? And when he got peace about it, he just jumped right in. I think there's something to learn there or something to be inspired by, you know? Yeah. Um, the simplicity with which people have formed apostolates, as I've interviewed a number of people, that's always really impressed me that um, it really does seem like they, uh, they find just the simplest thing to do, right? Like, oh, somebody who lives in the same condo as me looks lonely. I'm just going to go have dinner with them. Or, oh, men's group is is waning. Uh, we're just going to start meeting. And like you said, yeah. the I, I think the less we think about it, the better. Um, you know, like pick a room, pick a time, invite people. And if they show up, great. If not, do it again, do it again. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit like a, a first date. You know, we always say, we talk about this in prayer too. You got to know a place and a time. You got to know, I'm going to open up the word of God to Matthew chapter one at 8 a.m. tomorrow, right before I leave for work. Mm -hmm. And you go from there. You know, you meet a girl at, you know, hey, let's get coffee here. If we want dinner, we'll go out for dinner. But you got to, you got to start. Place yeah. and time, everything, everything flows from there. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he, um, he really did respond well to life situations. Um, yeah. In COVID, there was a need for community. He met that. Uh, he got married. He wanted to do something for for married couples and for people who uh, needed help and support in entering that new vocation. And uh, I, like, 
what I love is he did it not not just once, but but really several times in there. Um, and I think one, we don't have to be committed to something forever. It it could just simply be like six months. All right, this is how long the Lord wants us here. I think we saw that with some of the the people we interviewed from the military. Right, they know they're moving a lot, and so uh, there was kind of this freedom. This doesn't have to be a long term thing. Uh, and it, it seemed like Jericho got that as well. And he he it seemed like at least in hindsight. He had an easy time stepping out of one area when he realized that season was over and into another. And uh, I think you can see that uh, in like the life of St. Paul as well, who, okay, for this period of time, he's in this community and then he's going to go to another one. He's going to go to another one. And he still keeps in touch with all those people in those communities. But he doesn't feel this sense of, of lifetime commitment of, I've, you know, if I start this, I'm going to be locked in forever. Yeah. And, and I think I'm guessing his relationship with his wife allows him to discern that easier. It seems like they're a very intentional couple. I mean, they said some people go to Netflix and they were like, we're not going to be that couple. Actually, I was, I was going to ask you, Dan, how if you had any thoughts on how he and his wife's discernment of their apostolate proved it even more fruitful than it would have been on his own. Any thoughts on that? Maybe I should prep you for that question. No, that's fine. Um <laughs> Other, I mean, I think just the fact that they talked about it and that means it's not going to be a strain on their own marriage, uh, which is the most important thing, um, I think, or, you know, one of the most important things that um, God is asking both of you to do that. So if you're married, probably especially like more newly married and you're thinking about something like this, uh, an easy discernment tool is if your spouse says, no, I don't think this is what God wants for us. I think that's God's way of telling you no. Like you've, you've both got to be able to say yes to that with a full heart. Otherwise it's not the right time and it's going to bring resentment in. So because they could both freely say yes, uh, that meant there, there wasn't going to be discord sowed in their marriage and they could be free to, to be present to that apostolate. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. That's, and that's a good word of encouragement too, because I'm sure there are plenty of um, men and women who are just burning for the Lord and their spouse just isn't quite burning for the Lord. And they, and that weighs on me. I hear, I hear it often, you know? Yeah. So part of, sometimes I'll ask, okay, what, what did you discern your pastor? And they'll be like, I need to be real intentional with my spouse. Like the Lord has revealed a place where they've been, um, well, well, I don't know if they've been lacking in anything, but there's a freshness where the Lord is like, you need to be, call it what you want, investing, praying. Yeah, yeah wooing your spouse to the Lord, you know, takes all sorts of things, but it's, it's, it happens often enough, you know? Yeah. And let's say, even if there's not the, like, if you're not unequally yoked, if you're both yearning for the Lord, you're both committed. It, it could just be the, like the gift that the Lord is giving you that your spouse realizes, no, like I, my wife is very good about this of having, uh, I think at times more clarity about how something is going to impact the whole family ecosystem. And so I might get ex very excited about something. It's just part of my personality. I say yes to a lot. Uh, so then I'll go back to her and I'll say, hey, what do you think about this? And we will uh, very intentionally discern using an Ignatian style of discernment, looking for the, the presence of peace. And if we both don't have that, then we say, okay, I, we, this is not what God wants us to do right now. Uh, because if it were, then both of us would have that sense of peace. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, there have been times when I'm still convinced or she's still convinced we should move forward. And we come back to it in prayer. And in prayer, okay, then the Lord is, he, you know, for whatever reason, we both have that 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 sense of peace from the Lord. Like, okay, let's move forward. Yeah. So I think those are, uh, those are three really, uh, not necessarily easy things, but clear things that people can embrace for their apostolate. So the first one is uh, having a, a clear understanding of the, the kind of the categories of where people are in their walk with the Lord. <laughs> and, and letting that inform the the reality of your apostolate for the next couple of weeks or months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and keeping the end game in mind, right? We want, eventually, we want people to love Jesus so much that they just can't help but tell other people about him. Yeah. And, yeah. and it gives us something to pray for. I mean, we have to bathe our apostolates in prayer. And if I don't know where I want my, like, if I don't know where the apostolate is going, I don't know how to intercede for it. You know, Lord, I want every one of these, I want these three guys to be built up and fully established in you. Like, yeah, I, yeah. You know, that's what, that informs my prayer for them. And we should be praying by name 
for the men and women in our apostolates every day. Not not long prayers. I mean, like three second prayers. Right. Not yeah. Just, Sam and John, you know, like, but that calls down real grace into their lives. We've got to make mm -hmm. prayer. Yeah. And reminds us of, of how the Lord is at, like is asking us to work with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. It expands our heart with God's heart for the people that we are investing in. Yeah. So the, the next one was having a, a sense of expectancy, knowing that the Lord wants to do something new in our life and the lives of other people. And the, I think the way we operationalize that is we act like what we believe is true. Yeah. So we move forward into life with great confidence. God is going to show up. He's going to show up today. He's going to show up in this conversation. And I might not know, know how, but he's coming. So am I ready for him? Yes. And then the, the third one was uh, to allow life circumstances to kind of guide us and show us what apostolate is is meant for us like we don't yeah. need to overthink it um if there's a need of uh, for community if people are lonely if you're newly married and there's other newly married couples uh, or if you're a widow and you're around a lot of other widows like i think that's the uh that's the door that the lord is opening for you or the path that he's lighting up so you can walk it yes yeah man thank you jericho that's good. indeed well, friends, thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Reach More podcast. We look forward to being with you again next week. And Josh, thanks for hanging out with me today for this discussion about Jericho and how we can apply his uh, good good deeds or, or good approaches to other apostolates. It's a pleasure, Dan. You've got to reach more with the love of Jesus. Indeed. Well, God bless you, everybody. Have a great day. Please pray for us, and we will pray for you. Peace.